you're cruising, all is well, and suddenly the cockpit goes dark. Your first reaction to the aircraft will be... I will look for you. I will find you. And I will... Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my channel, Captain SQ, where we're going to discuss on EBA systems, emergency procedures, and supplementary techniques on how to fly the plane. Hola amigos, welcome to A320. Disclaimer, always refer to your company manuals, this video is merely a guide. Question, what causes electrical emergency configuration? Answer, when we lose AC bus 1 and AC bus 2, automatically the ram air turbine drops down and starts turning. This action alone drives the blue hydraulics and in turn will drive the emergency generator. So, the emergency generator will then supply the AC and DC essential bus, the most important items. Ram air turbine or RAT will stall at 125 knots. Therefore, do not go below 140 knots so that emergency generators still can power the aircraft. Let us look at some of the considerations when we get this emergency. Number one, the left hand seat pilot will be pilot flying. Why? Because only PFD1 is available. Number two, it is land ASAP red, so you have to call Mayday. Number three, you will be flying manual. No three musketeers for you. No autopilot, no FDs, and no auto trust. Number four, you will be in alternate law and then gear down in direct law. Do check out my video on Airbus laws. You can see the pop up on the top right of this video. Number five, only EWD display is available. I will show you in the later part of the video how do you go about it. Number six, no RA callouts and when you land, only two spoilers is available and alternate braking without anti ski no reverses available. Question, can you retract the gears on go around? Do comment below if you know the answer. Okay, show time. Let us take an example over here. You are cruising, all is well, and suddenly the cockpit goes dark. Your first reaction to the aircraft will be, I will look for you. I will find you. And, I will. and the aircraft response will be like First, take a big step back And literally F*** YOUR OWN FACE Talk about dark cockpit concept Jokes aside, the first pilot who notices it announce and cancels the master warning For about 8 seconds, which is probably the longest 8 seconds of your life You are only getting battery power until the ramp air turbine extends and powers the electrical system. With the three musketeers gone, the autopilot, flight directors and auto trust lost, the left hand seat pilot will fly the aircraft. So now the red has dropped, you will get this. As you can see, the AC and DC essential shed buses are supplied with juice. Basically, all the equipment via the CV's overhead panel are being powered. First thing is to fly the aircraft. Turn flight directors off and select track FPA. Remember that the aircraft is in alternate law. Next step is to call out for ECAM actions. Use the EWD properly. The minimum speed for the red is 140 knots. Below 140 knots, the red stalls and the aircraft returns to flight on batteries only. Let us look at the ECAM. Turn the generators off, then on. If unsuccessful, set the bus tie to off. This will isolate both generators. Once you disconnect the bridge, aka the bus tie, try to reset once again the generators. As engines are fed by gravity fuel feed, select engine mode to ignition. 
Only VHF-1 and HF-1 are available for transmission, so the right-hand seat pilot or first officer need to change the frequency on the opposite side. The FO can still talk using his or her ACP audio control panel. Copy interphone and cabin interphone remains available. Only transponder 1 is available. Fuel is gravity feed, so center tank fuel is unavailable unless if you are flying newer aircrafts, only the remaining 2 tons on the center tanks is unusable. Reset the FAC so you can recover the rudder trim. Switch back the bus tie to auto so you can use the APU for electrical supply. Note that APU is not available for 45 seconds after the loss of both engine generators and you only can start the APU below flight level 250. This time, just pretend that the APU is inoperative. Select blower and extract fan to override. What will happen when we do that? Do check out my video on ventilation system. In short, you get air from the aircon and will exhaust overboard through the extract valve. Extra fuel consumption and FMS predictions is not reliable. Let us take a look at the status page. Fly between 140 to 320 knots. Maximum brake pressure is 1000 psi. Fuel gravity feed. Land using flaps 3. Approach speed is VREF plus 10 knots or 140 knots. Landing distance procedure apply. Fuel consumption is increased. Direct law when you lower the gear. Slats and flaps will be slow. And why is it slow? If you know the answer, do comment below. Now let us see the inoperative systems. Fuel gravity feed. So watch out for your fuel quantity because you cannot use center tank fuel for older aircrafts. Only two spoilers available and no reverses and alternate braking so landing distance increase. No anti-skid and no wheel steering. ECAM actions complete. Next is situation assessment. The pilot monitoring takes out the QRH and look at the cruise part of the summary checklist. This is to decide where you want to land. The cruise part of the QRH reminds us to keep the speed below 320 knots and that we are in alternate low with the center tank fuel being unusable. It also reminds us of the available communication equipment and NAV. We take into account the landing performance and fuel to decide where to divert. Once we have made our decision, it is time for approach preparation. Here we rely on the status page as well as the QRH approach, landing and go around section to prepare the FMGS. I know on the approach I will have CAT1 capability, my speed must be above 140 knots, my slats and flaps will be slow, so I need to configure much earlier and I will be in direct law when the gear is down. Landing, we will only have two spoilers, no reverses and alternate braking with no anti-skid and no nose wheel steering. In case of go around and when gear is up lock, we will be in alternate law. Once everything is set, it is time for approach briefing. Here, we will refer to the approach, landing, go-around pages once again in the QRH together with the status page in the ECAM to review the FMGS pages. Finally, we have reached the last step which is performing the approach itself. Refer to the approach section of the QRH when performing the approach and when the aircraft is fully configured you can review the landing and go-around sections as a reminder. Check the status page to see we have completed all the steps. Okay, to recap, the sequence of actions goes like this. Electrical emergency configuration happens. Boom! Number one, fly the aircraft. Number two, ECAM actions. Number three, situation assessment 
by using the crew section of the QRH summary checklist and also look at the fuel and landing performance. Number four, approach preparation using status page and QRH summary checklist. Number five, approach briefing using the status page and QRH summary checklist. And number six, and last but not least, when shooting for the approach, refer to the QRH and also the status page for a quick review. A reminder, once you land, there will be no nose wheel steering, so do bear in mind that you require towing.